Because I'm gonna go 
heart attack right here. This is grounds for annulment, sis. I use Monica TV. I want an annulment. I want to die. Spachini, my Christ, I'm going to come on, my Jesus. I'm going to come on, my Jesus. I'm going to come on, my Jesus. I'm going to need a couple, and I think this couple right over here, that'd be nice. Oh, look at them. Wonderful. All right, all right, cool it, cool it. I see by your name. Not more than my bride. I'm, I'm not touching her. I love it. I love it, honey. I have to have it. I don't want you I've been dreaming about it all my life. I don't if want I you to have it. it, honey, I'll die. Would you trade it for what's behind the curtain? Yes. <laughs> I'm getting married. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. What is this? What is this, some kind of crazy joke? I love this girl and I want to marry her. What girl? He doesn't know any girls. Is he serious? I'm asking you, are you serious? No! I'm oh, you, you're too young. Who's the girl? Sue Wellington. The day I lost my mother. And she wants to marry you. It's going to be a curse on this. And Mr. Day. Wellington approves. <laughs> How come you never brought her here to meet us? Because he's ashamed of us. I was afraid mom would start yelling. Am I yelling? Mr. Lewis, am I yelling? You're right. And I'm going to keep on yelling because you're not going to marry that girl. She's a oh, trap. For Christ's sakes, bring it here. Yeah, sure. Never. Over my dead body. My baby. <laughs> I accept it. Can you accept this? I hate her! <laughs> it's a you, I'm a love addict. It's a you. But we no can go on like this. Friday nights is no enough for me. You understand no enough. We no can take no more. <laughs> it's not easy for me. Claudia!
This is the thanks I get. <laughs> He's engaged to a girl who isn't even Italian! <laughs> Say, Kate, what's that got to do with it? You married me and I'm not Italian. <laughs> I know. I practice my solo. Again? You want it to be good, don't you?
leads the way to romance. <laughs> Is there a straight man in the house? <laughs> Doesn't sing Streisand duets. <laughs> whose favorite French cuisine is raisinets? <laughs> is there a straight man here by chance wearing polyester pants? <laughs> a man who's turning gray, who still wears a black toupee, a wrangler who is in the mood to rag, whose beak and strong and butch like Katie Lang. <laughs> Heterosexual men can be useful now and then in their small or cheap physical ways, in their mindless tete a At times I need a macho brute with prehistoric flair. At best the men in here will tie me down and do my hair. <laughs> Is there a straight man passing by in a flashy cut on by a spaceman near a bar who thought Halston was a car? The question is, is if there's any doubt? Is there a straight man? because this is my last. Oh. And till next week. <laughs> no, it gives you a little tug at your heart. It's thrilling, though. It's thrilling. I mean, I have seen so many changes in my lifetime. Since when does everybody go into rehab? <laughs> my mother would have said, here's your rehab. <laughs> rehab this! <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Now you go into a restaurant nowadays and they hand you a menu and the photographs are so fabulous that you immediately <laughs> order more than you should, obviously. <laughs> and then the waitress comes over and says, was everything all right? And I say, my compliments to the photographer. <laughs> Now, if you think the world's not trying to drive me crazy, it says 50% of high school students engage in oral sex. And the other 50% are waiting for their braces to come off. <laughs> now, I mean to tell you that my mother, it's true what David Kaminsky said, it's true. My mother did take me every Saturday morning to the movies. And she gave me a big box, not just two sandwiches of egg parmesan sandwiches. She gave me five or six. And then she, I would sit there and really enjoy it. I would enjoy the movies. She came back five hours later and said, come on. I said, no, I like it here. Please, Ma, please. I like, well, I did. I loved every single second of it. I loved it. I loved seeing the stars and the supporting players. Oh, I used to, well, I'd come home and drive my parents crazy. They really thought I was a little, you know, they did, because I thought I was Betty Davis one day, and I'd say, are you ready for dinner? <laughs> dinner is being served. Barbara Stanwyck. Why don't you leave me alone? You're just a headline to me. Go marry a newspaper. Shelby Winters. Well, listen, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I did the second day diet. I, 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 I ate it all over my face, that's all. Mom, pop kettle. <laughs> I love them. Marjorie Mann. Get out of here before I crack your face. <laughs> Percy Kilbride, seven year locusts coming more than finding the water. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
James Cagney's sister. Sure, see, if you knew my brother, Jimmy, he was great. Lionel Barrymore's grandfather. My grandfather was the most... Ronald Coleman's niece. <laughs> Ronald Coleman's niece. Oh, if you knew my uncle, he should have been king. Don't you? Joe Crawford. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene Paulette. Who? Eugene Paulette. I remember him. He was the fat guy who wanted, well, he had a daughter who always wanted to marry a rich guy. And then, and then oh, well, he'd say, I'll never let you marry my daughter, never let you marry my daughter. I like that one. <laughs> Tell him about Effie. Effie Pataloni. She was my best friend in school, and I shared a homeroom locker with her. And she would say, Catherine, listen. I'm going to take you for the last time. <laughs> I'm so sick of your mother's sake playing sandwich. <laughs> that oil keeps seeping all over my books. <laughs> you people will never know how brilliant that impression is. <laughs> <laughs> never been in the show business. But how music has changed for a second. There's a couple of song titles here. <gasps> That's right, David. God bless country western music. <laughs> because they always tell it like it is. You know, you go to a rock concert. Now, I don't know if you saw the Grammys, but I'm telling you, I didn't understand a damn word they were saying. <laughs> but country music brings it back to reality. Here are some new song titles. If the phone don't ring, you'll know it's me. <laughs> You're the reason the kids are so ugly. <laughs> I don't know whether to kill myself or go bowling. <laughs> I keep forgetting I forgot about you. She took everything but the blame. <laughs> my husband ran off with my best friend. And I miss her. <laughs> I gave her the ring, she gave me the finger. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, folks, that, well, I don't know, it, it's just so different for me that I think I'm getting out just in time. <laughs> but I loved when I was with Spike Jones in his orchestra. That was my first big job. And I want to tell you that he, I toured Canada and the United States in vaudeville. And that was thrilling for me. And we ended up in New York at the Strand Theater. And right next door was a ticket agency. And I used to go there in between shows because at that time we did five shows a day. And so I'd go there and I'd talk to a man named Jesse Burley, who I loved. And I just talked to him. And he says, hey, kid, the show's over for you. You've never seen Broadway. And here's two tickets. One is a play. Go see Lorette Taylor in the Glass Menagerie. Oh. And the other ticket was for a musical comedy called Annie Get Your Gun, oh. <laughs> starring Ethel Merman. Oh. <laughs> Ethel Merman was the quintessential New Yorker. Big, brash, noisy, didn't show much emotion. Not too sentimental either. But when she was on stage, there was no one like her. Rumors fly and you can't tell where they start. Especially when it concerns a person's heart. I heard tales that could set my heart aglow. Wish I knew if the things I heard are so. They say that falling in love is wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. So they say. And with the moon up above it, I can't recall who said it. I 
know I never read it. I only know they tell me that love is grand. This thing that's known as romance is wonderful, wonderful in every way. So they say. Do you know what a thrill it was for me to get to know Ethel Merman personally? It was a thrill. And sometimes she'd even come backstage to see me. And she'd say, hey, Ballard, where's the job? I gotta pee. <laughs> to her first cabaret concert, the Persian Room. And she sang three songs, and suddenly she stopped. And she said, I worked with the most wonderful man in the world, a man named Arthur Freed. He could write, he could, oh, he could act, he could direct, he was a film director. Arthur Freed. She didn't know he was in the audience, and he stood up and he said, Ethel, Ethel, I'm here. She turned and said, Hi! You leave your house one morning. You don't have any warning. You're stopping people shouting the bus friend. Oh, the man in your arms is wonderful. Wonderful. In every way. So they say. And I still think it's wonderful. Oh. I got to know the one and only Sophie Tucker, oh. who is the last of the Red Hot Mamas. <laughs> She was also a little risque, but I got to know her later in life. I think she was always old. I think she was born old. And she was born bossy. Where the hell is my teething ring? And when the doctor slapped me, I didn't cry. I liked it. <laughs> you know, back in the old days, we need microphones with no need for microphones because we had heart. Once you have heart, you don't need. You know, honey, you had your way, and 
is a hat from one of my idols. That was Beatrice Lily. A um, mama knew, see? And she used to wear it. And the funny part is she was friends with Sophie Tucker. She was friends with Fanny Bryce. And it was so incongruous because she was so sophisticated and they were so down to her. But she'd say little things like, I've been to a marvelous party. <laughs> it was a nudist party. <laughs> Someone said, hey, you, you in the blue suit. I said, blue suit hell, I'm just cold. <laughs> When I first came to Palm Springs, the first star I met was Alice Faye. Wonderful Alice Faye. And Bill Harris. Now that was a guy. Oh my God, he loved to live. He loved life. Is that true, Sylvia? He loved to gamble. He loved to eat. He loved to stay out all the time. And I said to Alice Faye, I said, what was it like being married to Bill Harris? She says, well, he was a fun guy, all right. I'd come home, I, I mean, I was home. At three o'clock in the morning, I'd open my eyes and look around and say, ah, there's a man in my room. <laughs> I said, Alice, I'm writing a memoir. What shall I call it? She said, well, she thought about it for a minute, and she said, well, how about red carpet my ass? <laughs> Alice Faye was a great star on the Century Fox, and she sang great, so I'm going to sing a melody so beautiful, and you're going to be able to understand the words. <laughs> Isn't that thrilling? This is an Alice Faye song. You'll never know
and she had a 13-year-old son that she absolutely adored. And she sent him to an analyst so he could learn to live his life, his new life, without her. That's a remarkable lady. This is Judy Holliday. So, this is... When I first went to Hollywood, they paid me $50,000 and they called me dumb. <laughs> the second movie I made, they paid me $100,000 and they called me stupid. Oh, I can't hardly wait till I become an idiot. <laughs> Now, the good thing that happened to me in show business that I was lucky enough to be in a production of Cinderella, the first Cinderella on television. <laughs> and to hear Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein call the cast together and do the, the score, that was like the thrill of a lifetime. When Julie Andrews was in that production, my darling Alice Ghostling, and it was Howard Lindsay, Dorothy Stickney, uh, Edie Adams, and it just was un incredible. And it was shown just twice, once for the East Coast, once for the West Coast. That was 90 million people, and you had one chance to do it. Do you know how terrifying that was? <laughs> oh, my Lord one chance to move the costume, to move the costume, everything. Frightening, frightening, frightening. But I'd like to give you the essence, just a short number of Alice Ghostly, wonderful, wonderful Alice Ghostly, and myself. Uh, we played the ugly sisters. We were terribly miscast. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, here we go. I'll give you the essence of her and then the me. A girl like her, a frail and fluffy beauty. Why can't a pal ever once prefer a solid girl like me? She's a frothy little bubble with a flimsy kind of charm and with very little trouble. I could break her little arm. Oh, a 
joy of my life every year here in Palm Springs. It started with Sonny Golo, Ritkin, Rosine Supple, and Harold Matzer took it to the heights. Number one. And I am so grateful to him because he invites me to the gala. I'm not going to lie to you people, I love it. And I met last year at Bradley Cooper, and he was charming and very handsome. He put his arm around me, charming. But this year, be still my heart. I met Colin Farrell. <laughs> and he put both arms around me. And he kissed me here, and he kissed me there. I felt like a dirty old woman. <laughs> I just loved him because I looked up and saw his blue, blue, blue ivory shine. I adored, adored Shecky Green. I was in love with you. Well, at least you ended up with another Italian broad. That's good. <laughs> Maria. But listen, that, I mean, let's face it. I, I hate to tell everybody this, but my mentor was a man named Henny Youngman. Henny Youngman, he was really something wonderful. A Portia Nelson, Portia Nelson, who wrote this song, I said, that song is so much for Henny Youngman. I've got to do it. As I remember him, he was a gentleman. He was so bright of mind that I can't find words to say. He turned the darkest day into a world of gold. He made things younger as they were growing old. As I remember him, he was a gentleman. I knew with well because where he was, life began. And if you knew him, you would understand his style. As I remember him, I smile. He told me all my one-liners and jokes, and I loved it. And I loved when he used to introduce George Burns. He says, when you have breakfast with George Burns, he orders a three-minute egg, they ask him to pay in advance. <laughs> Very, very glamorous. And an old bum comes up to her and says, Madam, I haven't eaten in four days. And she says, Oh, God, I wish I had your willpower. Eddie <laughs> 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 Youngman. Man walks into a library and he says, I'll cheeseburger malt and some fries. <laughs> she says, Sir. You were in the library. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I'll have a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you like that one. I love it. <laughs> Lady walks into a church topless. And the minister comes over and says, You cannot come in here like that. She says, I have a divine right. He 
自己干了就罢了。<笑><笑>
And Carolyn Lee, who was my neighbor in New York, wrote it when she was very young. I never realized how brilliant she was because at that time I was 40 something. I thought, wow, this is good. But Jimmy Durante, when he sang it, it made all the sense in the world to me, no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. impossible schemes you can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams and life gets more exciting with each passing day love is either in your heart or on the way don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart It's much better by far to be young and hard. And if you should survive to 105, who can all you to arrive on a being alive? And here is the best part. You've got a head start if you are among the very young. each other since uh, maybe 1950. Uh, you were doing uh, uh, the National Cup of Government in Kansas City. I was working at Eddie's <laughs> and uh, we used to do, we've been friends ever since. And I watch you tonight and you don't see this anymore. Are you? So, I hope you find the key. <laughs> I'm a bass baritone. Uh, that's Mel Torme's key. <laughs> the more I see you. Right, right ahead. Here we go. She sang uh, You'll Never Know. Uh, by the way, I, I had a, a nightclub here for about an hour and a half. Uh, it's called Basin Street. And, and uh, Alice Hay came in. I happen to have known her all my life because my sister was the actress Joanne Drew and they were very close friends. And. Uh, 
I started singing You'll Never Know and I got about eight bars and I walked over to her and I just handed her the mic and she did the rest of it. It was maybe the nicest moment in my whole life. Yes, I wish I had that. The more, what, where are we? The more I see you, the more I want you. Somehow this feeling just grows and grows. With every sigh I become more mad about you more lost without you and so it goes can you imagine how much I love you the more I see you as years go by I know the only one for me can only be you my arm won't free you. My heart won't try. I love you, Dave. I'll you want it in What do you want me to do? I did not understand. One more. Oh, I'll, I'll do a. Uh, You'll never know just how much I'll miss you. Pretty close? You'll never know just how much I care. And if I tried, I still couldn't hide my love for you. You ought to know, for haven't I told you so? A million or more times you went away and my heart went with you. I speak your name in my every prayer. If there is some other way to prove that I love you, I swear I don't know If you don't know now. You said you can't do Hollywood squares. Tell them why. Well, it's a game of bluff. And I would say, okay, uh, uh, the, the question would be to Kate, to, oh, to, uh, pick Kate Ballard, uh, how many wings on a, a, a caterpillar, whatever? And she'd say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, no, 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 Kate, that's not how, that, we don't play the game that way. <laughs> we, what we do is, if we don't know the answer, we give a bluff. She said, but I can't do that. And so we keep inviting her back, and she would say, I don't know. <laughs> And finally, I said, we got to get rid of that broad. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Mimi Hines, we did an act together, and God, did we have fun. And Kay created it. It was a thing called, and then she wrote it. It was an evening of, with Christy and Andreas, Mimi and myself. By the way, I will be 88 this month, and you are a year old little kid.
And there's a warmth. You can see it in her eyes when she works. I was sitting there, and everything she did came through with the eyes and the face and the expression. <laughs> but today, I mean, I'm like uh, near the end of my, my career, people are saying, he, he does too much Jewish. Because I, well, I'm not black. <laughs> I want to tell you something I know. I want to tell you yes, and a tenth kid. No, I can we'll do that later. I got to tell you that uh, I went into a Chinese restaurant the other day. And I, if this is a fact about And a China guy says to me, he said, Oh, you are from show business I see you before. Some crazy. 
Don't stick a dream. I say, yes, that's very nice. Yeah, when I used to watch, I tell you pizza, and I see you, you tell a different joke. You never tell a Chinese joke. I said, Chinese joke? And he told me a Chinese joke. <laughs> Which I thought was brilliant. Chinese father says to his son, Mi dong ki ka. Yim shi ge mu yu dang ki ha ro. Mi da ga yang ko a ya sa. And the kid says, Mo yu dong ki ta wo. Jin yu dong ma wo se se. And the father says, Mo yu dong ki ta wo. Did you hear this before? Joy to hold on to a microphone. And, uh, you inspired me. You really did, because I, 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 I really want to do my last show. And you're going to sit there and then do 45 minutes. You know, people say to me, they say to me, "Chicky, chicky, chicky." That's that's what Sullivan used to say. Sullivan couldn't get a name. So tonight I shall. We have a young. Comic from the Las Vegas Riviera Riviera Hotel. Chicky, chucky, chuck, chuck, chicky, chuck. What the hell is that fat son of a bitch's name? I got to apologize. My mother never spoke with an accent. My mother said to me one day, she says, "Chicky, chucky, chucky." She says, why do you tell people I speak with an accent? I said, Mom, I make a lot of money doing that. She says, what kind of money do you make telling people? Because I was born in Chicago, you know that. I said, no, but you know the kind of money I make telling people you talk with an accent? She says, what kind of money? And I told her. She says, listen, I'm going to say what I'm going to do. There is only one way to become a star. Carol Channing. this number, I laugh so hard I can't stand it. <laughs> you promised me you would do it. Now you got to do it. When? Right now. <laughs> Cecilia Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me I haven't got my eyelashes on? <laughs> anyway. Oh, thank you. I have to tell you, though, you know, when actors are between jobs, they think they're never going to work again. It will never be like the last show. So I was two blocks from this dear, sweet girl, and he right down here, you know where it says, A uh, hey, Ballard Lane. Well, two blocks into K Ballard Lane was where I ran every time I got blue and thought, this is it, it's the end. And every time I went to visit Kay, and boy, life was, I got through it just fine and went on to the next show. But that's what keeps you going. A girl like this 
and she kept me going, and she doesn't even know it. <laughs> My name <laughs> is Cecilia Carpenter. S-I-S-S-O-N. I starred in the first all-talking picture. <laughs> Mississippi Melody. <laughs> I have been on the silent screen for seven years and worked with Wallace Beery, Buster Keaton, C. Aubrey Smith, and many other <laughs> My career was going great guns when suddenly something happened. Overnight, I hit the skid. Studio politics. That's what it was. I just wouldn't play ball with the producer. And I told him so in no uncertain terms. Now, when I watch all the old movies on TV, I say to myself, Cecilia. <laughs> With your looks and talent, you could have been one of the greatest stars today if you'd only been able to keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> that moment so perfectly for me, probably every moment, Kay, that I've had with you over the years is, is in this song. When it all comes true, just the way you plan, it's funny but the bells don't ring. Quiet thing. When you hold the world in your trembling hand, it's funny, but no choir sing. It's a quiet thing. There are no exploding fireworks. Where's the roaring of the crowd? Maybe it's the strange new atmosphere way up here above the clouds. But I don't hear the drums. I don't hear the band. The sounds they 
say such moments bring. Happiness comes in a tiptoe. What do you know? It's a quiet thing. Very such good friends and I'm so honored to be here this evening and to be asked to sing for you and I I feel loved and this song is about feeling loved by Cole Porter I am loved I am loved 
by the one I love in every way. I am loved, absolutely loved. What a wonderful thing to be able to say. I'm adored, I'm adored by the one who first led my heart astray. I'm adored, absolutely adored. What a wonderful thing to be able to say. Trumpets blow and beat on the drums because I know, I know I am loved. I am loved. What a wonderful thing. What a fabulous thing What a beautiful thing To be able to say